Today we're taking a look at the HiDiz MS3. These are IMs or in-ear monitors, and the MS3 stands for Mermaid Series 3, and the 3 references the three drivers. There is a dynamic driver and two balanced armature drivers, and I'll get a little bit more into that in a second. These were sent to me for review, and uh, otherwise, all opinions are my own, and they retail for... 170 is what they have on their website that currently they're at 120 and uh, recently they were on sale for 100 so I, I would expect you could regularly pick them up for 100 to 120 it seems to be the normal asking price on their website which I think is a really good price for what these are originally in your monitors were really marketed towards live musicians and yet in recent years it seems there's been more of a push towards the kind of hi-fi audiophile music listening headphones as a, as a high-end earbud rather than your AirPods or your regular phone earbuds. Um, so these do have a little different design than traditional earbuds. They have a wire loop, but they also tend to be of a higher quality, and there's a lot of very high-end inner monitors on the market right now. There are many IEMs with multiple drivers, and typically you'll see DD or BA. DD is a dynamic driver, that is your traditional speaker type driver that you see on speakers or on most headphones. And balanced armature or BA drivers, you only really see them in IEMs. They were originally designed for hearing aids, but someone found they had a good application in in-ear monitors. Balanced armature drivers tend to be better at reproducing very high frequencies and dynamic drivers are better for low end and bass frequencies. You'll also find that as you move up the price bracket in IEMs, you often see more and more drivers added. Now this isn't always the case. There are relatively inexpensive sets of headphones that sometimes have three, four, five, and there are some very high-end headphones that only have one or two drivers. So it is not an indicator of quality, and uh, I think some companies like to put more drivers in to make it sound fancier than it really is. Um, but there are advantages, I think, to having multiple drivers. I'm not an engineer, so that's not my domain. In the case of the HiDiz Mermaid series, they do go from lowest to highest, one being the cheapest set and five being the most expensive. These fall in the mid-range and at the 100 to $120 mark, I think they perform really well. Now, I don't have anything else at that exact price point to compare them to, but I do have several other sets of IEMs that I've reviewed in the past. I have a few less expensive models from KZ um, in the $20 to $40 range, and then I have a set that Eco Audio sent me that are around $50. Now, of all the IEMs I have, the more expensive they are, the better they sound, which makes sense. You would hope that's the case. Of course, it's not linear. There's a bit of diminishing returns, but Considering the price of these compared to the others, I think these are really a good value because they have by far the most impressive base of any of the IEMs I've tried. These are the first ones to really, um, really impress me with the base. Some of the others have decent sounding bass. I've tried these out with a whole lot of different genres and I'm primarily a metal fan, but I've tried them with uh, some electronic some hip-hop, some acoustic music, and they really perform well at everything. It may be shocking, but I'm not a huge hip-hop fan, but listening to some tracks with some really crazy low and loud sub-bass really set these headphones apart from all the others I have and really showed the depth of the bass. Now, it's apparent on all kinds of music, but especially if you like really bass-heavy music, these did phenomenally well. However, they are not bass heavy. They're not tuned in such a way that the bass stands out too much. And there are some tuning options as well. But I have these in kind of the default stock tuning, and I found that to be my preference. I haven't set these up to have an exaggerated bass, but the low end on these is really, it's got really good low extension. So it goes down very deep and it's clear it's not overwhelming, but it's 
punchy and it has really good extension. It just feels a lot more powerful. It feels like you have a subwoofer in your room. It feels like there's just a power down there that most other, all the other IEMs I've tried, and even most uh, over-ear headphones like these don't have that same kind of bass response. And so that really impressed me with these because it's the first time that I felt that low end uh, in such a clear way. And even my studio monitors behind me, while they can put out a good amount of bass and have pretty good low extension, they don't have quite as impressive bass as these. So uh, I've been trying out with a few songs that I'm producing, mixing, trying to use these for low end monitoring. And while I wouldn't trust the overall tonal balance of them for everything, for low end monitoring in particular, they're uh, kind of handy because I can really feel the bass clearly and compare it with some commercial masters and get a sense of how my mix stacks up with a commercial mix since I don't have a sub on this system and it doesn't have the most exaggerated big low end and it doesn't have a complete extension down to 20 hertz or anything. The high end is certainly very present. It's a little bright, but it's not overly harsh. It's not too bright. Um, and coupled with a really powerful bass, it doesn't sound thin. There are a number of tuning options in the box, and I like that they actually labeled the different ear tips for what their purpose is. There's two sets of tuning filters which you put on the drivers themselves and then also three sets of ear tips in three sizes. You've got bass heavy ear tips and uh, bass light <laughs> bright ear tips and then the balanced ones. And same thing sort of with the filters. There's the balanced ones that it comes stock with and then the red ones are, they say more geared towards rock or metal. Um, certain genres like that. They have a little more low mid bass, um, upper bass, and a slightly different high end. It's kind of less bright in the lower treble range, but it's got a big boost around 5 to 10k or so. The silver ones I didn't listen to a whole lot, but they seem to have a little subdued bass, so maybe better for acoustic genres, for people who want a little less bass. They didn't seem to change the high end as much. Even though they say the red filters are good for rock and metal and maybe hip hop and stuff, I didn't like them as much. I found them to be slightly muddier and the treble was kind of darker in some ways and brighter in other ways that I didn't like as well. It may work for some people. Uh, but I preferred the stock tuning filters. I thought those sounded the best. And I tried out all the ear tips a lot. And um, I found that the balanced ear tips sounded the best. The bass on these is impressive enough without uh, really using any of these kind of bass boosting modifiers. So the bass ear tips, while they may boost the bass, I thought they also they made everything kind of uh, muddier, in my opinion. It's a little darker, a little muddier. I didn't like them as well. Um, so it's nice that you have all these options, and some people may prefer them. Everyone has different taste. But the balance filter with the balanced ear tips, to me, sounded really good and has a nice balance, as you would hope. I thought the bass on these was impressive enough without needing to artificially exaggerate it and I uh, didn't have any reason to want to reduce it either. In the box, you'll get three styles of ear tips. These are labeled vocal, bass, and balanced, and they come in small, medium, and large sizes. There's also three tuning filters, one that come on the IEMs themselves and two more in the box. You'll get the IEMs, a cable, manual, warranty card, and a nice little travel bag so you have a case for them when you're on the go. The cable on this is quite thick. It's the biggest on any of the IEMs I have. I don't know if that means it's higher quality. It certainly feels well built and rugged as far as a cable goes. It is the four strand braided style, but because it's nice and chunky, it doesn't really get tangled up easily like some of the thinner ones do. So I like that. These are 18 ohm, which is quite a low impedance, meaning that they get very loud off of low power. So you don't need a headphone amp with them. They get plenty loud enough off of a smartphone or a laptop. They're 15 grams without the cable, which 
is a little heavier than some, but not the heaviest I've measured. They feel nice and solid. I wouldn't say they're heavy feeling. The material feels very nice. Uh, everything feels very high quality and they're comfortable to wear. Build quality is great. Sound quality is great. The low end extension on these and the overall tuning for my taste is really excellent. I don't really have anything to complain about and I think the price is fair. So all in, they're really a solid set of headphones and I quite enjoy them. I'll definitely continue using these and listening to them because I really enjoy them. I hope this has been interesting. Thank you for watching. And as always, smash like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.